Here's the problem, though, man, and, and, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. This national championship game, a rematch between Alabama and Clemson from last year. Clemson ain't no punk. Clemson basically had Alabama on the ropes. Um, if not for that onside kick, that old lame, cheesy onside kick that Nick Saban, you know, uh, pulled off at the end of that game, Clemson may have won last year. I said it at the start of the season. This is another thing I prognosticated correctly. I called a rematch in the national championship from last year. It's going to happen, even though Clemson had me scared there with that pit loss or whatever. So I called a rematch. I want to say, y'all know I'm from the great state of South Carolina. I want to say Clemson's going to win this game. But I'm just I'm just scared of what I've watched out of Alabama all year, man. I mean, they're just, they're just a freaking machine. They got the best players. Clemson got fantastic players as well. Like, Clemson is pretty much, Dabo has basically made Clemson, like, Alabama-esque, you know, with the talent that they brought in there, man. Mike Williams, uh, Deshaun Watson, they said they got two or three quarterbacks that's coming in to take Deshaun Watson's spot that are just as good or maybe even better, you know. So he's drastically improved the talent level around there. Defensively, that defensive line are beasts. But it's going to be hard, hard, hard to beat Alabama. But at the start of the season, man, I'm going to stay with my pick. I picked the Clemson Tigers to be national championships. First time since 1981. Hold that Tiger. Hold that Tiger. I think they're going to get it done. You know, I'm, I'm a week in advance. The game isn't until next weekend, but I've said it all year. I pick Clemson and I pick Alabama. Go back and listen to the show. The show pre the, the preseason shows, I picked Clemson, Alabama to repeat, and I picked Clemson to win it all. And the main reason I'm picking Clemson to win it all is because of Deshaun Watson. It's as simple as that. At some point, I say the same thing about Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott. At some point, Jalen Hurts, who has been fantastic this year, that man is a freshman. Okay, and he kind of struggled a little bit last uh, this past weekend. I think veteran quarterback. Heisman Trophy finalist two years in a row. A great team behind him. Experience against a guy that was playing high school football last year. Jalen Hurts is 18 years old. Bless his heart. Overall, Alabama probably has a better team. They probably have better players slightly. And I mean it's minuscule. Slightly. But... A veteran quarterback like Deshaun Watson against an 18-year-old kid. Clemson Tigers national champions. Hold that tiger. Hold that tiger. Hold that tiger. They get it done. First time since 1981. Clemson Tigers, national champions. What are your thoughts? When we get back from the break, we got to recap what happened in fantasy sports this past weekend. I'm going to read some of your chat. I'm going to read some of your chat. And then we also need to kind of like preview... uh, today's action in college football. You got some good games going on tonight as well, and and we will not get out of here before I talk about Ronda Rousey. (laughs) Yeah. As a matter of fact, let's do that. Let's flip it a little bit. We get back. I want to give you my thoughts on Ronda Rousey, um, and then we'll read some of your chat before the top of the hour, all right? Don't go away. This is the Doug Stewart Show.
Welcome back. Man Talk Monday. Yes, sir. The number to the show is 404-382-0338. You can also email me at Doug at the Doug Show I want to get into some of this chat here, man. Hear your thoughts on uh, my thoughts about Clemson handling their business over uh, Ohio State and Alabama, man. Just a machine. Uh, once again, the Washington Washington didn't embarrass themselves. They didn't embarrass themselves like Ohio State. <laughs> you know, but, but it's just too much, man. Alabama, you look at that defensive line, man. They just got, and they've always, pretty much they've always had monsters, man, outside of the Mike Shula era. Um, <laughs> you know, they just, they athletes, man, are just crazy. They get the top, they had a kid. I can't remember his name right now, playing safety for them, number 29. And he plays – he's played good all year long uh, when I've seen Alabama play. That kid is from New Jersey. Like, like they got a kid, and I'm going to assume probably the best safety in, in New Jersey, four or five-star safety from New Jersey, to come play at Alabama. That's what Nick Saban does, man. He's built a bully. He is truly – He has truly built a bully, man, and uh, it's going to be hard, man, but I just think, you know, I'm just hoping. You know, really, it's a coin toss game for me, man. I just think that some of the intangible things um, about the teams, the personnel, uh, slightly go in favor for Clemson. Now, I think Alabama's a seven-point favorite right now, man. I'm going to need the Stewies to help and pray for me that the Clemson Tigers win this year. Come on, y'all don't want Alabama to win again. Quickly, man, um, Ronda Rousey's mama, Anna Maria DeMars, who was actually the first ever woman champion in judo from the United States, uh, the United States, she's asking and hoping that her daughter, Ronda Rousey, retires from the sport after a 48-second TKO this past weekend from Amanda Nunez. <laughs> Well, listen, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. You've heard my, my, my thoughts, my commentary on Ronda Rousey. Once again, one thing, one of my pet peeves in sports is, you know, the Tom Brady effect, the Peyton Manning effect, where the media boosts up certain people uh, for whatever reasons that they do, you know. And for the longest time, man, I just thought Ronda Rousey, even though she had been knocking out a lot of people, man, um, I think she got full of herself, um, braggadocious. I don't like women fighting, period. And maybe just call me old-fashioned. I don't like to see two chicks beating the hell out of each other. But that being said, man, I, I think that the media, Dana White, UFC, man, they just built up this Ronda Rousey chick to be the greatest fighter since Muhammad Ali. Like if you let if you let people in the media and, and UFC tell you Ronda Rousey would kick Muhammad Ali's ass in this prime. But such was not the case. Such was not the case that we found out with Holly Holm the last time and now this time with this Amanda Nunez chick. And let me just say this. I I I went on and on about how I wanted to see Ronda Rousey get her ass kicked and it happened against Holly Holm. And I went on, you know, briefly. I don't talk a lot about UFC around here if you're new to the show. I, I, I briefly talked about can't wait to see it. Hopefully, Ronda Rousey will get her ass kicked by Emmanuel Nunez, and it happened. But I, I got to be honest with you, man. That wasn't fun watching. <laughs> I actually, and I'm being honest here, man, and you're listening to the Doug Stewart Show. I actually... I mean, not a lot, but in the pinky, in the tip of my pinky, I felt a little bit of a sorrow and remorse. And I felt kind of sorry. Uh, just slightly, once again, in the tip of my, my pinky, maybe just in my fingernail, I felt sorry for Ronda Rousey and that ass kicking she took the other night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
yeah, I mean, I'm backing off all of the. I hope she gets her ass kicked this, that, and the other, man. Because I don't, that don't, that don't even feel right no more, man. The ass kicking that she took the other night. She had a dinner of fists. She ate fists for dinner. It was a fist dinner. She had a fist dinner. She did. She had fists for dinner. And, uh, you know, my pronunciation, I'm from low country, I'm Geechee. So maybe you don't understand. You had big miscommunication about penis and penis. So I'm saying fist, as in at the end of your arm, you know, right below your damn wrist. She had fists for dinner. Yeah. And I mean, it was brutal. I mean, left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand, over and over and over and over again. And it was really sad to see, man. Like, I don't wish that on nobody, daughter. And that's somebody, daughter. That's Anna Marie DeMars. <laughs> that's Anna De- uh, Marie DeMars. Like, I don't wish that on anybody. And, and it's funny, after the fight, um, Amanda Nunez basically goes off on Ronda Rousey's trainer. Like, she's been convinced by her trainer that Ronda Rousey can really fight. Like, she can really box. You know, there's different disciplines, what, what they call it. it. There's different disciplines in MMA. Um, so some people are strikers, which means they box. Some people are grapplers, which mean they wrestle with you. And uh, uh, what's her name? Ronda Rousey's background is in jiu-jitsu, kind of like them, them, uh, them Gracie brothers in, in, from Brazil, where they, you know, they can put your ass in a damn chicken wing before you even know it. You, you don't even know it, and your ass is in a chicken wing. Right. So, so they can put your ass in the chicken wing before you even know it. So Ronda Rousey was good at that. But these last couple of fights, for some reason, she's been trying to go toe-to-toe with quote-unquote boxers. And so I understand what, what, what Amanda Nunez was saying about her trainer. Like, dude, what, what are you doing? She, she ain't bought that life with her hands, clearly. And, man, when Nunez realized. 